Well, folks, this week I realized that 90% of the things I worry about don't happen, which seems to indicate that, for me anyway, worrying really does work. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> that, that's not the case. You, you cannot improve or change your circumstances one bit by worrying. And the stress and anxiety that our worrying creates in our lives, well, it's, it's not very fun. Uh, so folks, this is uh, part number two of a sermon entitled Winning Over Worry. I, I hope you were here last Sunday or, or had a chance to listen to the sermon on the live stream. If not, here's a quick summary of what we talked about. Jesus tells us, we should not worry or be anxious, period. We should not do so because we should instead be trusting God. Worry also does not make sense because it's unnecessary. Our Heavenly Father is always taking care of us. And worry is unproductive. As I just said, it doesn't accomplish anything. Worrying cannot change the past present or future. We also talked about how, it, how even though we don't need to worry, we still should plan and, and work to meet our needs, and we still should be concerned about the welfare of others. Nor does the reality that God cares for us mean that we will escape all trouble in life. I would like that, but it, it doesn't happen. That's what took me 30 minutes to say last week. I just said it in two minutes. Okay. That's what Jesus teaches in Matthew 6, 25 through 34. But how does that, how does this text, and knowing these things, how does that help us stop worrying? How does it help us avoid anxiety? Now, I think most of us would say, I know I shouldn't worry. I wish I didn't worry so much, but I, I still do it. Well, let's pause and pray that through his word and, and, and by his spirit that God would help us with this battle over worry. Let's pray. Father, thank you for your word, the Bible, for the truth that it speaks to this very practical topic. Help us, Lord, to hear these words and understand them and realize what they mean and help us to believe them and obey them. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, a couple of preliminary statements. Uh, number one, uh, Jesus' focus and mine is uh, on what we referred to last week as sinful worry. Sinful worry. Uh, this is when we make a choice to think about and, and focus on usually fears concerning the future. Sinful worry. It involves dwelling on a lot of hypothetical what-ifs and reflects a, a lack of trust in, in God and his purposes. So I'm not talking about appropriate concern you should feel as you make plans to solve problems either for yourself or for others. And, and I'm not really talking about deep-rooted anxieties and, and physical symptoms such as panic attacks. Though Those are not really choices someone makes. Now, I will say there are a number of different factors that contribute to these things, and I'm convinced sinful worry is one of them. So, what I'm saying is that if you can avoid worrying, if you can keep your mind from dwelling on fears about the future, you're going to stop feeding that deeper anxiety, you will weaken it, and by God's grace, you will eventually find freedom. So even if you have an anxiety that's beyond what you're choosing, if you choose to not worry, you will eventually be able to 
get rid of that deeper anxiety. So again, I think no matter who you are or where you're at on the anxiety continuum, Jesus' teaching does apply to you. And each of us can benefit from heeding his words. Secondly, I, I want to say something about anti-anxiety medications, which are increasingly popular. Uh, I read one estimate that 25% of women and 15% of men are taking or have taken some type of medication for anxiety or depression. And folks, it, it's, it's a bit more complicated than saying, well, if you want to stop worrying, you just need to take this pill, or if you would just quit worrying, then you would need to take a pill. It's more complicated than that. And I, I think there are, are too many people on these medications, but I also believe that some individuals truly do benefit for, from them. Um, there is no sanctification through medication. <laughs> Taking a pill is never going to make you more holy. But sometimes a pill can put you in a better position to make a right God-honoring choice. Just if you were in extreme pain, you might take some ibuprofen, which would enable you to make a, a better choice. Okay, let's again just review what Jesus says. I, I'm just going to read verses 31 through 34, Matthew 6. So do not... Worry, saying, what shall we eat, or, or what shall we drink, or, or what shall we wear? For the pagans run after these things, and, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. Again, pretty simple. Jesus says, don't worry. It's wrong. So the question is, what do we do, what can I do to better obey this command? How, what, what do I do if I don't want to worry, if I don't want to be anxious? Well, first thing I would say is, is ask God for forgiveness. Jesus has set the bar really high. Because he essentially says, don't, don't worry, ever. And, and that's not an easy command to obey. Even during the past week, almost everyone in this room failed to follow Jesus' instructions. I know I've failed more than once, more than twice. Perhaps, perhaps after hearing the sermon last week, you felt a bit guilty, you probably should have because, yes, it is a sin to worry. Uh, though, as we've said, some level of concern is appropriate. Being worried or anxious clearly goes against what Jesus tells us to do. Yet, wallowing in guilt doesn't help someone overcome worry. Worrying that God is angry with you for being a worrier probably doesn't help you to worry any less. The Lord doesn't want you to be knocking your head against the wall thinking, oh, what a, what a terrible person I am because I worry so much. Rather, he desires that you turn to Jesus and experience his free and full forgiveness. When Jesus died on the cross almost 2,000 years ago, he did not die just for axe murderers and drug dealers. He died, for, he died for worriers. And friend, if, if you know that sometimes <laughs> that's who you are, what, what you need to do is turn to Jesus. As God enables, you need to stop trusting in yourself, stop thinking, hey, you know, worry is no big deal, and instead put your faith in what Jesus has done for you. And when you do that, God will completely forgive you for being a worrier. And according to the Bible, you, you're, you're then a true Christian, a, a believer in Jesus. But many, maybe, maybe all true Christians, still worry sometimes. 
In fact, some of you here are really good at worrying. And when you do that, when you do that, it is a sin. It's, it's a sin against God. It's a failure to trust him. So when you worry, you, you ought to follow the instructions of 1 John 1, 9. If we confess our sins, God is faithful and just. Because of Jesus, we'll forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Even when you commit the sin of worry, it's good to confess that to the Lord and experience his forgiveness in a fresh way. Confess your worry to the Lord. Ask for his forgiveness. Secondly, I ask for God's help. Once you've experienced God's forgiveness for being a worrier, then you need to ask the Lord to help you overcome that sinful habit. It's the same pattern, really, for almost any sin, and certainly for worry. Ask God's forgiveness, and then ask him to help you not to be a worrier. Maybe you've been thinking, okay, I guess I've been worrying about some things but from now on, I, I will not worry anymore. Never again. Right. No. <laughs> no. Worry is not an easy trap from which to escape. You cannot do it on your own. Your willpower will not enable you to stop worrying. Lord, help me. Help me not to worry about this. Or, Lord, help, help me to stop worrying and help me to trust you in this situation. That's the prayers, type of prayers that should come from your lips. It, it's also good to ask others to pray for you. No, others can't fight the, the battle with worry for you, but they can encourage you through their prayers and, and, and through reminders to trust God instead of worry. Now, you don't have to put your photo on a billboard and uh, have the words Joe Smith is a worrier and, and announce it to the world. What, but it is good for your close Christian friends to know about your struggles with worry. They should know about that so they can pray for you and encourage you. Ask for God's help. Ask for the help of other believers. Thirdly, again, to, to win this battle with worry, Reflect on God's sovereignty. Do that often. In our text, this seems to be what Jesus sees as the best weapon against worry. He says, look at the birds, look at the flowers, think about how God cares for them. He will take care of you as well. Friend, you can trust our Heavenly Father, because he is in control. He's the sovereign of the universe. Not a sparrow, Matthew 10, 29, not a sparrow falls to the ground apart from his will. He will not allow anything to happen in your life or any event to occur in the universe that cannot be ultimately used for his glory and for your ultimate good. And that's true for every believer in Jesus. Whatever occurs in this universe can be used by God for his glory and for your ultimate good. And thus, there's no need to worry. Even if your worst nightmare comes true, even if you flunk that math test tomorrow, even if the doctor says the biopsy shows cancer, even if a tornado blows down your house, even if you get laid off from your job, even if your car breaks down halfway to Minneapolis, even if your spouse dies before you do, even if you die before your spouse, even in those situations, God will still be in control. And he'll still be accomplishing his purposes. I forgot to say, even if your favorite football team gets beat in the playoffs, it's still going to be okay. And for that reason, you, you don't have to worry. Oh, I, I, don't mean, I don't mean to make it sound easy. Trials and tragedies are not fun. 
Not fun. I, I would prefer never to experience any. And one of, yet one of the most basic teachings of the Bible is summed up by the, the Babby Mason song that says, God is too wise to be mistaken. And, and he's too good to be unkind. So when you don't understand, when you cannot see his plan, when you can't trace his hand, don't worry. But instead, trust his heart. Trust his heart. Friend, trust his sovereign goodness. When you're tempted to worry, it can be helpful to turn to some of the passages in the Bible that remind you of God's sovereignty. Read Ephesians 1 and be, and be reminded that as a believer in Jesus, you were chosen by God before the world ever began. Read the last part of Romans 8 and be reminded that God will work all things together for your good, your ultimate good, and that nothing, nothing will ever be able to separate you from the love of God that is ours through Jesus Christ. And then go back to the book of Genesis and read the story of Joseph, especially chapters 45 and 46, and be reminded how even when other people intend to harm you, even when other people do harm you, God can take those actions and use them again for his glory and for your ultimate good. Reflect on God's sovereignty. Then, reflect on God's promises. Psalm 94, 19 says, When the cares of my heart are heavy, sounds like worry. When the cares of my heart are heavy, your consolations cheer my soul. Now, the Lord has a variety of ways that he consoles or comforts us, but... Uh, Number one way of consoling us are what the Apostle Peter calls the great and precious promises of God's word. His great and precious promises. And I've already mentioned some of those involving his sovereignty, uh, how in every situation he's working to accomplish his purposes, uh, which he promises always, yes, includes his glory and our ultimate good. But there are many other promises in the Bible as well. One of my favorites is Hebrews 13, 5 and 6. He, the Lord, has said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. So you can confidently say, the Lord is my helper. I will not fear. What can man do to me? Another great promise is Psalm 84, 11. For the Lord God is a sun and shield. The Lord bestows favor and honor. No good thing does he withhold from those who walk uprightly. Or Psalm 34.10. The lions may grow weak and hungry, but those who seek the Lord lack no good thing. Or Psalm 16.11. You make known to me the path of life. In your presence there is fullness of joy. At your right hand are, are pleasures forevermore. Or, I didn't put this in my notes, you could do Psalm 23 that we read. Wonderful promises from God. Friend, when the cares of your heart are many, when the cares of your heart are many, reflect on the comforting truths that God speaks to us through his word. Proverbs 12, 25. Anxiety in a man's heart weighs him down, but a good word makes him glad. A good word makes him glad. You want those good words to fill your mind. You might want to develop a list of verses or passages that you find particularly encouraging on which you can focus upon when you're tempted to worry. If you need some help with that, you know, talk to one of the pastors here. We'd be glad to help you come up with verses that, that can be encouragers to you when you kind of feel like worrying. Number five. Pray about the things you, you are worried about. 
pretty simple. Pray about the things you're worried about. Ephes uh, Philippians, Ephesians, Philippians 4, 6. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. Instead of worrying, pray. Instead of worrying, pray. And then verse 7, and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. And that peace of God helps you not to worry. We, we see a similar thought in, in 1 Peter chapter 5, 6 and 7. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, so that at the proper time he may exalt you, casting all your anxieties on him, because he cares for you. Casting all your anxieties upon the Lord. Friends, wh whatever your concerns are, Finances, health, relationships, your children. Th these are all things with which the Lord can be trusted. Whatever your concern is, it is something with, with, with which the Lord can be trusted. And as you pray, you, you give those concerns to the Lord. You cast those concerns upon the Lord. And thus, Peter says, you don't have to worry. You don't have to worry. Number six, getting rid of worry, overcoming worry, focus on following Jesus. If you find yourself worrying about something or about some things, try to focus instead upon what you know the Lord wants you to be doing right now. He doesn't want you to be worrying. He wants you to be doing something else. Try to focus on that something else. Jesus calls it, Seeking God's kingdom. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things will be yours as well. Folks, that's, that's where our focus needs to be. In fact, if you focus your life on seeking God's kingdom, on acting and thinking and feeling in ways that are pleasing to him, you're not going to have a lot of time to worry. In the midst of World War II, Winston Churchill was asked if he worried about his immense responsibilities as the Prime Minister of Great Britain, and he replied, I'm too busy. I have no time to worry. I'm too busy. Folks, we live in a world that often seems crazy, chaotic, and corrupt. The secular philosophies that dominate American culture leave people empty, confused, and lonely. Those of us committed to, to honoring the Lord and serving hurting people are never going to run out of things to do. <laughs> There's always going to be something else you can do to honor the Lord and help someone who's hurting. There will always be a spouse to encourage. There will always be children who need love. There will always be a neighbor who needs someone to visit or, or, or call them on the phone. There will always be a committee to serve on. Those who are seeking first the kingdom of God have another focus besides worrying. Those who focus on following the Lord also avoid some of the idols which can provide an environment for worrying to grow and flourish. Now, by idols, I don't mean statues of, of wood or stone to which people bow down. I, I mean focusing your life on something where it doesn't belong. Focusing your life on something other than God and his kingdom. That's idolatry. For example, some people have financial success as an idol. That matters more to them than anything else. And yet, when the focus of your life is ma making and saving money, there are lots of things you can worry about. Will the stock market go up or down? Yes, it will. But you don't 
but you don't know which it will do, so, so you worry. For, for, for some people, the most important thing is not the Lord, but being accepted or, or admired by other people. So they're continually worrying, what, what, what does this person think about me? What, what are other people thinking? Really, whenever you're worried about something, it may very well indicate that thing is simply too important to you. Whatever you're worrying about may indicate that that thing is too important to you. It's then an idol. Now, people do a lot of worrying about their health. That, that, that only seems natural, but many of us have kind of made good health an idol, thinking that's what makes life worthwhile if I have good health, and yet there's numerous folks in this room with health problems that will still, they still find life worthwhile. If you're worried about who's going to win the election this fall, politics may be too important to you. Yes, you should certainly be backing and voting for candidates who support biblical values, yet you also need to remember that who, no matter who's in the White House, God is still on his throne. God is still on his throne. It's ultimately he who determines who wins each election. Friend, keep your focus on the Lord, not on other things. And if you keep your focus on the Lord, you'll do a lot less worrying. Seven, as you seek to win over worry, strive to live one day at a time. Remember what Jesus says, Therefore do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. Some of you know that. <laughs> Friends, we do not and, and cannot know what tomorrow will bring. Yes, it's good to make plans, but, but there's no reason to be worrying about them. I, I love a movie scene, in, it's in Annie Hall, where the 12-year-old Woody Allen is worried that the universe is expanding and it will come apart. And his teacher tells him, well, the universe may be expanding, but Manhattan is not. So get busy on your homework. The Lord tells us, don't worry about the universe expanding. Don't worry about a giant asteroid hitting the earth. Or don't worry about a hundred other possible catastrophes that might happen. If the Lord wills, those things will happen. But if not, they will not. So do your homework. Do what the Lord has called you to do today. Years ago, Manager, baseball manager Casey Stengel would tell his great New York Yankees teams, remember boys, we play one game at a time. Don't be looking ahead. We play one game at a time. Likewise, I, I, I simply encourage you, live, live them one day at a time. We really need to do that because that's how they come. One day at a time. We need to drill that into our minds. You might want to write out what Jesus says on a, an index card and stick it on your fridge. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. And finally, number eight, utilize other resources. If you're still fighting this struggle with worry and anxiety, utilize some other resources. If you're worried, the first seven things I've mentioned this morning aren't going to be enough to help you overcome worry, then there are some other things you can do. First, I'd say, you know, do some reading. Um, I left, I think, I think it's on, but there's a good little booklet uh, entitled, it's by David Paulison, Overcoming Anxiety, Relief for Worried People. I know Brittany's going to try to get uh, more of those available. Just a little booklet, anyone can read it, Overcoming Anxiety. If you want to tackle a bigger book, Overcoming Fear, Worry, Anxiety by uh, Elise uh, Fitzpatrick, I highlighted that on CBC Family the other day. That would be, it says it's for women, but I think men would benefit. 
and the people here who want to read a longer book, most of you are women anyway, so, so go for that. Um, and last but not least, Brittany Hagston, our church counselor, will be leading a four-week class on a biblical perspective on anxiety, and that starts next Sunday. It'll be uh, at 1045 in room 302, so if you come here for uh, the worship service, then for the second hour, you can join that class, even if you're part of another class. If you want to take a little break and, and go to that for four weeks, uh, that will be a biblical perspective on anxiety, and uh, you can sign up for that if you're interested. Friend, I, I just pray that the Lord would help you not to waste your life worrying. There's so many other things which he wants you to do, so many other uh, things he wants you to experience. Don't waste your life worrying. Live it with confidence. Live it with confidence as by God's grace you seek to trust and follow Jesus each day.